Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this uh, Chess Blitz uh, postmortem video. This is a postmortem of my uh, Blitz chess game number 55, where I was black and I played the Sicilian defense, uh, classical variation. So we'll get to that. Knight f3 is the normal response here. If you're going into the open Sicilian, I play d6, knight c6, and e6 are also popular choices there. And d4, this is the open Sicilian, so we exchange, develop my knight, and attack the e pawn. And this is uh, an important uh, move order thing. You want to get this knight out first and attack this pawn so that uh, white will defend it with his knight, and that stops him from pushing his c-pawn forward. So that avoids the uh, Meroxi bind where he has pawns on uh, e4 and c4. So you play that knight c6 out, he defends it, and then, he, um, yeah, then I play knight c6, I'm sorry. Play the knight, you play the knight to f6, and he defends it with knight c3. And then you play the knight to c6. And this move here then is called the classical Sicilian. So if we go back, um, the most common move here is a6, which would be the knight orf. e6, the skeveningen, or g6, um, the dragon variation are also popular moves. Um, but I avoid, uh, I used to play g6, and um, I've been avoiding it lately because it seems like everybody with white knows how to play against it. One advantage of this knight c6 move is it's a, uh, doesn't seem to be as well understood or well known what the good moves are. People are more used to playing maybe against the knight or for the dragon. So uh, you get people trying different things. Probably the best response here is bishop to g5, putting pressure on the knight and provoking a move e6 to defend it so that the pawns don't get doubled. And then there's a weakness on d6, which uh, white can try and attack in various ways and get a pretty good game. So that's, that's I guess, what I would play. But... Uh, Bishop e2 was played, and I go with g6 after that, so kind of a dragon setup, and my opponent played f4. So at this point, now we're pretty much out of the opening book, and um, I'm going to leave Houdini uh, turned off. I'll, I'll relay some of its findings as I walk through the game here. Bishop g7 was played, and knight takes c6. And now at this point, um, up until this point, the computer preferred white over black, which is normal. It, because of white's opening advantage. But after this, uh, it actually starts to like black a little bit. Um, it's just not a good idea to trade this pawn unless you have some concrete uh, tactical reason for doing it, because it uh, trading this knight brings a pawn towards the center and just uh, strengthens strengthens black's position and gets rid of this uh, good knight. Uh, so, um, And then bishop f3 maybe is a little bit imprecise too. It allows this move... Uh, Queen b6. I didn't play this in the game, but it's an interesting idea, getting on this diagonal and stopping uh, white from castling. So uh, probably instead of bishop f3, it makes sense to go ahead and castle at this point. So, But I uh, put my rook on this file. He castles. I castle. And he plays e5. And now the tactics start. So his bishop is attacking a pawn, and this pawn is attacking a knight. So I need to... Uh, find a way to get out of this without uh, losing material, and the answer is uh, queen to b6 check. It's a move I get with tempo. We can't, uh, for example, block with uh, e3. I can just take the bishop and still have the check. So it forces him to make a defensive move like uh, rook up or king over, and then that gives me time to do something about my knight. So I, I took the pawn first, and then uh, played knight e8. Um, but the computer prefers the move rook to uh, rook to d8, and harassing his queen, so he has to do something about that before taking the knight. And then uh, that gives me time to relocate my knight, uh, and I could even move it to a square like a d5 then, because with the rook behind it and the queen out of the way, this square would be a safe square for the knight. So that would be a much better way of playing. Um, I played back to e8. Um, there was one other I, line I was considering during the game, which was knight c7. Knight d7, is that? Yeah, knight d7. But I was afraid of this move uh, e6. And what the computer says is it's not so bad. I can play the move knight e5 and pawn takes, rook takes. And uh, I'm a little bit care <laughs> cautious about playing a position like this with all these widely scattered pawns. But I guess my pieces are active. And anyway, the computer uh, thought black was doing fine here. So I uh, thought that was interesting. Let's go back to the game. Uh, after f takes e5 here, um, I move my knight to e8. And uh, he develops to f4, and I 
block that pawn with my bishop because I didn't want him moving this pawn with a discovered attack against my rook. Plays queen d3, and I went knight c7, getting my knight into the game. Yeah, the computer thought also knight c7 would have been better previously. And uh, actually, if I play that, I don't even have to play the move bishop e6. So uh, probably a better way to play it. So b3, rook fd8, hitting the queen, queen to e3. And now queen e3 is a real mistake and probably uh, gives the game to black. At this point, uh, you know, maybe black is slightly preferred, but uh, the material is even, the, the advantage is not all that great, but uh, bishop e3 is a big mistake. So uh, uh, if you want to pause the video here and consider why that's a mistake, what would go wrong after that, um, I'm going to go ahead and give away the answer now. Um, after queen e3, what goes wrong is what was actually played in the game. It's I just take the queen, and then I take the pawn. And so first of all, you have to notice this bishop is overloaded. It's defending the queen and it's defending the pawn. And uh, as in so many cases, it can't really do both jobs at once. So you have to force an exchange to reveal that that was uh, not an adequate defense for the pawn. And then the second thing is once the bishop gets to here, um, this knight is caught in a terrible pin. Uh, if the knight moves, I can take the rook and just win the exchange that way. And uh, But there's no good way to defend the knight. The rook can't get over to defend it. Neither rook can get over to defend it. That bishop's the wrong color. And this bishop only has two squares to de try and defend it from, but they're both covered by my rook. So this piece is, uh, well, it's not lost. Actually, the computer says the best move is to uh, move it to the side and allow me to win the exchange. But uh, this would be much better. Much better for white. My opponent tried something else. He tried bishop takes c6. It's an interesting idea. Uh, one other line I wanted to look at here. Um, during the game I was worried about this line. Bishop takes on a7. And I was thinking, well, I take the knight, then he takes a rook, and I take the rook, and he takes a knight, and now he's threatening a rook, and uh, and my bishop is hanging, and uh, not at all clear what. Yeah, the pieces are even, so I probably would move my rook to attack his bishop, and he could retreat, and I could retreat, um, and uh, yeah, White would be back in the game. So uh, what the computer pointed out when I was uh, trying to investigate this, it says, well. You don't have to uh, take the knight right away. You can just threaten the bishop. And now um, now two pieces are hanging. This piece is hanging. This piece is hanging. And, uh, you know, white can save one of them, but he can't save both. But he's, So he's going to, uh, going to lose a piece here. So that's the way to play that. Um, so he didn't try a bishop takes a7. He tried bishop takes c6, which wins a pawn but doesn't make any threats. So I can go ahead and grab the knight, which I do. And he moves his rook out of the way. And I play a5, which is not um, awful, but I, I uh, let my opponent back in the game right here. So this is uh, another little statistic, <laughs> little tactical test rather for you. <laughs> uh, the move I played was not the best move here. So what's the best move for black? Uh, you know, white has just moved his bishop and attacked my knight, which is pinned. And what's the best way to respond to this? Okay, pause the video if you want uh, more time to consider this. I'm going to give away the answer. The best way to defend is to counterattack, in this case. And that's often true. That's a common expression in chess. Uh, the counterattack is, is often the way to go when your pieces are under attack. And why is this attack go so good? Well, I'm not attacking one bishop. I'm attacking two. If one bishop moves out of the way, uh, then I get the other bishop. So... At best, this uh, just turns into a trade. He can take the knight, and I can take his bishop, and then he can retreat his bishop somewhere. Um, and so I'm just a piece up at this point, and that would be very good for me. Um, so if we look at it here, yeah, he gave up a whole piece here when he let, he didn't just lose the exchange, he lost a piece when he lost that knight. And by playing this way, by playing rick d6, I just maintain. I force a trade and I maintain an advantage where I'm a piece up. So I totally uh, missed that during the game. I don't know why. That's that's a pretty common tactic. 
I played rook c8, meekly, meekly defending my knight. And that's just the wrong way to play chess. Um, he plays bishop b7, threatening my rook um, and uh, forcing me to undefend the knight. And once again, um, I have a counterattacking move here. And uh, so if you noticed uh, or figured out the last counterattacking move, you should see this one right away. But if you don't see this counterattacking move, uh, pause the video and look for it. Uh, the right move here is <laughs> rook, to, uh, rook to b8, counterattacking the bishops again this way. And once again, uh, you know, he can retreat a bishop and lose one, or he can uh, just have some kind of trade and come out a piece down. So twice in a row I missed the same, the same tactic. So after bishop b7, I played knight d5, and uh, he wins the exchange here. And so now um, it's not nearly so clear. He retreated, and then I started attacking his pawns. And this situation is um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3. Yeah, the pawns are even, and I have two pieces for a rook. So I have a slight edge. The computer rates it as about 1.5 points in my favor. Um, you know, you, white could still play on and try to uh, try to get a draw. But it looks like I'm going to be able to uh, gobble up his pawns and increase my advantage. But uh, So anyway, my opponent resigned at this point, and that was game over. But I thought that was pretty funny. I missed the same tactic twice, and it's a, that's a common tactic. You should definitely uh, have that one in your memory banks if you haven't, uh, haven't got it there already. So I hope you guys uh, learned something, enjoyed that, and uh, leave any comments you have in the section below, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.